Hi, welcome to the Dim Lights Podcast. This is episode two, and I am your host, Shane Ihorn. So this week, I wanted to talk about superhero films, their history, and their future now that it's up in the air. So I think week to week, um, I want to alternate between talking about new topics and maybe some deep dives like this, um, what this episode's going to be. Um, next week, on Tuesday, the Oscar nominations come out, so next week we'll probably do Oscar predictions, um, I don't know what we're going to do after that, but yeah, week to week it's going to switch up between a new topic and an overall general topic, and this week it's superhero films or comic book films or whatever you want to call them. So over the past, let's see, 15 years, um, they've kind of dominated the film landscape, they've been at the forefront of pop culture, on not just movies, but TV as well, um, there's been a rise in comic book sales, uh, comic book video games, but today I want to focus specifically on movies, and just going over the history of the superhero film and how we've gotten to this point that we're at now. So the first superhero movies were really not even true movies. They were film serials back in the 1940s. Um, these were little shorts that would play at the beginning of other movies, and you would have to come back to the theater each time to see... Um, uh, it was basically like a TV show. You have to come back to the series, the movie theater each time to see what happened next in the serial. And these were... Um, uh, you know, limited for the time. These were black and white, and they usually starred characters from DC Comics, um, like Batman or Captain Marvel, who's now called Shazam, or characters like the Phantom. Um, so we don't really get a full feature-length superhero movie that's in the public eye until 1966, where we get... Adam West, um, Batman, which is based off the TV series that's going on at the same time. So this is a campy movie. It's pretty goofy. It's more of a comedy than a, a drama. And this is pretty much the Batman at the time was the superhero in the public in pop culture. Comic books weren't really respected. Um, it's more than anything than like kid stuff. So Batman was a lot of people's only superhero that they knew of and it was meant to be funny more than anything so that's what this movie is but then about 12 years later we get what i would say is the first modern superhero movie and that is superman which is directed by richard donner stars christopher reeve and this is the quintessential superhero because Superman is pretty much um, uh, looked at as the first superhero in comic books. Um, a big part of what leads to this inspiring every other superhero movie is this is an origin story. So we get to see how Kal-El or Clark Kent becomes Superman. And when you look back at Batman, um, the 1966 Batman, they never really explain why he's Batman or how he became Batman. He's just Batman. But now we're seeing the growth from alter ego to superhero because of that people get more of a connection to the character. And this takes itself a little bit more seriously than Batman. It's like today we could probably look back at it and laugh because it's kind of cheesy and corny, but it's not a comedy. It's not laughing at itself like Batman was this is just trying to be fantastical um this comes out a year after Star Wars and it's part of the first run of um first box office um uh, blockbusters so Superman's the first major landmark in superhero movies but there's not really another big one until about 10 years after that where we get Tim Burton's Batman this is dark, um, gothic. It's 
it was it led to a lot of people being shocked because in the public's uh, mind at the time, Batman was Adam West's Batman. He was goofy. He had his sidekick Robin. They were always cracking jokes. It was corny and cheesy. And now we get this Batman who talks in a grim voice and it's violent for 1989. Um, it tells the origin story of Batman for the first time on film where it shows why Batman's, you know, a pretty dark character. And that lends itself um, uh, a lot to Tim Burton's style. Um, he's very gothic. He's dark. Stars Michael Keaton, who becomes an icon of cinema as Batman. Before this, people actually were protesting Michael Keaton being casted as Batman because the only thing people knew him for was the comedy Mr. Mom. So people, comic book fans, were saying, oh, this guy is Batman. Really, it'd be the equivalent, I guess, to if you wanted to cast Adam Sandler, I guess, as Batman today. People wouldn't take it seriously. But then when the movie comes out, it's a major success. I think it, it was the highest grossing movie of all time at one point, I believe. Okay, that's not correct. But it's a major success. It's the biggest comic book movie of all time until a couple years later in 2002. But Batman is everywhere after this. You know, Prince gets involved in the marketing and... Jack Nicholson's Joker is a Jack Nicholson's a big star in it. So this is what is going to set the tone for superhero movies for the next couple of years. And that's evident in the next movie on our list, uh, which is The Crow from 1994. So this is another super gothic, super, a lot even darker than Batman superhero film. This is based on um, an independent comic book. Stars Brandon Lee, the son of... Bruce Lee, and the superhero in this movie, The Crow, is a lot more violent and brooding than Batman. Um, he's more of an anti-hero than anything. And in the 90s, as we getting more and more grittier, there's more, there's the rise of, you know, kids being, well, that's every generation, but the 90s is like, personified by nirvana and grunge and you know rap and just anti-authority and that's kind of what the crow is representing and it's following the footsteps of batman of superheroes are dark superheroes aren't just for kids they're for adults as well and that's that's the theme of uh superhero films in the 90s mostly you know, you get stuff like Dark Man and Batman Returns, which is even darker and weirder than the original Batman. Um, there's stuff like Spawn, which comes after The Crow. There's even the even the Ninja Turtles movie, which was released in the 90s, is a lot darker than the cartoon show that most people are familiar with. It was more based on the comics. Um, you know, the turtles say stuff like damn and it's more violent so that's the theme of superhero movies in the 90s and that theme continues in one movie before we get to that one in 1997 batman and robin comes out um this isn't by tim burton this is by a joel schumacher um it's honestly a lot closer to the adam west version of batman than it was tim burton's um, and this is very poorly received critically. It's commonly called one of the worst movies of all time. It was a financial bomb at the box office. Um, it's just getting away from the darker and grittier take of Batman that was so popular. It's getting back to goofiness and campiness. And this kind of kills the reputation of Batman in mainstream media he's looked at as like a joke um and to this day we haven't seen robin in a batman film just because of how this movie shaped the public perception of the character there wouldn't be a batman movie until eight years after this 
But after Batman and Robin, which came from DC, now we're starting to get films from Marvel. And Marvel follows the dark and gritty style that we were just talking about uh, with an anti-hero, and that is in Blade, um, played by Wesley Snipes. And this is also a major success because uh, Blade is because Blade is cool. Blade is silent. He carries around a sword. He kills vampires. So this is Marvel dipping their toes into the superhero movie market. And this isn't obviously the first one, but this is the first that's a major success. But it's not as big a success of what would come next for Marvel, and that's X Men. So this, um is probably the start of the next phase of superhero movies where we're looking at franchises now coming out of Marvel. Obviously, a standout character is Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. And the X-Men are doing away with their classic comic book outfits of like bright, colorful, and they're wearing all leather. It's classic 2000s grunge and washed out cinematography this is a result of marvel mar so we're gonna have to go back marvel wasn't doing too well financially um in the 90s and that led to them selling off a bunch of their properties to film studios to just stay in business so x-men goes to fox fantastic four goes to fox hulk gets sold to universal and then the next movie we're going to talk about, Spider-Man goes to Sony. Now, they'd been trying to make a Spider-Man movie for years before this. Um, Michael Jackson wanted to play Peter Parker. There was one that was going to be directed by James Cameron and star Leonardo DiCaprio as Spider-Man and Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dr. Octopus. So it takes a long time to come out, but eventually, 2002, we get Sam Raimi Spider-Man. And this stars Tobey Maguire and his Peter Parker, just like Hugh Jackman's Wolverine becomes iconic. Everyone still knows the the lines, all the set pieces. Stars Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin, which is one of the best comic book movie villains. And this is a lot like Tim Burton's Batman, where you can tell that's a Tim Burton movie. This is you can tell this is a Sam Raimi movie. This is all his hallmarks and trademarks. And that also starts a trilogy of successful Spider-Man films. So for a time, Wolverine and the X-Men, Spider-Man, you get um, Ang Lee's Hulk during this period. So that is like what the idea of superheroes are in the public culture. Because most people don't read comic books. People's main exposure to superheroes are through the movies. So... When these are the popular movies that are coming out, this is what people think of. So people, when they think of superheroes, Superman and Batman have kind of faded out of the public eye. And you're thinking Spider-Man, you're thinking Wolverine, Hulk, you're thinking Blade. And these movies are more serious. They're action movies. They're kind of closer to what The Matrix is. They're not quite as corny as something like Superman was back in the 70s. But there's still a level of like fantastical fantasy to them. That kind of changes in the superhero genre in 2005 when Batman Begins comes out. So this is by Christopher Nolan, who's at the time a rising auteur director. You know, at this point, at this point he had only made three films, the most successful being memento so like we said earlier batman wasn't taken very seriously by people who's kind of a joke until christopher nolan comes along and revitalizes the image this is realistic starring christian bale this is elevated i would say in a way that's not tim burton's batman where the joker is dancing to a prince song and Batman is, this is taking the character more seriously. And that follows up in The Dark Knight, which is probably one of the biggest movies of all time. Um, 
arguably the greatest superhero movie of all time. It's a big box office success. It's a critical success. And obviously the one thing everybody talks about, The Dark Knight, is Heath Ledger's Joker, which is one of the greatest performances ever. And The Dark Knight is setting the bar for what future superhero movies are going to have to live up to. Um, It's just basically like a a monolith in pop culture that um, uh, not even just superhero movies, this changes film in general. Um, It gets snubbed for Best Picture at the Oscars, and that leads to them expanding the category from five to ten movies. Um, It shows that like superhero movies can be taken seriously, can get like awards contention. They're not just a drawn a genre film. The Dark Knight also represents kind of an end of an era, the second era for superhero movies. Because at this time, X Men the X Men series had ended. Sam Raimi Spider Man series had ended. There was an attempt to reboot Superman with Superman Returns, but that didn't do too well. And the Dark Knight at the time, no one really knew if there was going to be a sequel. Christopher Nolan was kind of didn't know because of the passing of Heath Ledger. So this sets the stage to set up the next era that starts with Iron Man. So this is the first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And really the main focus point of this is that it's the comeback vehicle for Robert Downey Jr., who, you know, had a lot of legal trouble, had had struggled with addiction issues. And this is him coming back in a lead role for a tentpole movie for the studio. And this was the first big success for Marvel Studios, which had established itself. And they were basically like, well, we don't have the X-Men. We don't have Fantastic Four. We don't have Spider-Man. The Hulk's rights are kind of split up. So we're missing our biggest characters. So what do we got? We got the Avengers. And that's about it. So let's work with what we have. And let's try and make something out of this. And they do, because Iron Man's a big success. At the end, they set up with Nick Fury talking about the Avengers initiative. And so after that, we get Thor and Captain America. And there's an Edward Norton Hulk movie and Iron Man 2. And each one is basically setting up saying, each one is each one of these are setting up saying, yes, we're going to put all these characters together and something that's almost never been seen before. This is a shared universe. So there's going to be little Easter eggs, and eventually we're going to build up to the Avengers in 2012, which becomes one of the biggest movies of all time. Um, over a billion at the box office. It's number one for weeks and weeks and weeks. Highest grossing movie of the year. So this is the end of Marvel's first phase, and they're right on top. There's pretty much no one that can touch them. And there wasn't really a lot of competition for them at the time because the same year The Avengers comes out, the other superhero movies are the first movie in the new Amazing Spider-Man franchise starring Andrew Garfield, which was a moderate success, but obviously didn't get on the level of The Avengers, and The Dark Knight Rises, which is the end of Christopher Nolan's trilogy, which is the end of Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. And after that... DC is attempting to try and put up a fight against Marvel because they're thinking, well, we were on top for all those years with Batman and Superman, and that was when Marvel wasn't even making movies. So now they're thinking Marvel is such a big success, we need to get in on this. So they come out with Man of Steel in 2013. Um, This is directed by Zack Snyder. It's a dark and gritty take on Superman. And it doesn't go over very well. It does okay at the box office, but there's a lot of talk of Henry Cavill's Superman being not very Superman-like and Zack Snyder's style getting in the way of the story. Meanwhile, Marvel is still pumping out movie after movie after movie, still being successful. And then they get a test for themselves when they put out Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, This is probably their most out there concept, you know, a movie about a talking tree and a talking raccoon. This is the most out there concept that they have, but it ends up being a success. Um, 
largely from like how comedic the movie was because it's directed by James Gunn. So this is Marvel basically like saying we're like we're expanding our universe even further. And there's going to be all kinds of different superheroes you can't even think of later on Captain Marvel and stuff like that. And after Marvel puts out Captain America Civil War, which is a billion dollar movie, we get an introduction of Spider-Man to M- to the MCU. This is the start of Marvel's Phase 3, which is building up to culminating to almost 10 years of Marvel and the end of their first real saga. So while Marvel is gearing up to their big um, uh, event movies, DC releases their second movie in their universe, which is Batman vs. Superman. The first time Batman and Superman are in one film together, and the movie ends up being a commercial and a critical failure. Um, this from DC rushing to catch up with Marvel and wasting their opportunity. Because if you look at Marvel's strategy, they build up to the Avengers with Iron Man, Hulk, Iron Man 2, Captain America, Thor, and then the Avengers. All the core Avengers get a movie to themselves before they all meet together in the Avengers film. So we, we're connected to these characters. We know what they're like. And we want to see them interact with other characters. In Batman versus Superman, we've known Superman for one movie in the, which he wasn't very likable to begin with. He was kind of monotone. There's people that, you know, talk about all the destruction he caused to the city and how is that very heroic. And we get the introduction to this universe's Batman, played by Ben Affleck, who we have no connection to. This is a brand new Batman. He's not very Batman-like. He kills criminals. He The whole point of his motivation in the movie is to kill Superman. And that doesn't really resonate with audiences. And it's kind of clear that DC is trying to play catch up to Marvel. And it's not really working out for them. But then after that, they do have a success with Wonder Woman. Um, so it's their biggest success since The Dark Knight. Makes a billion dollars. This is mostly because it's a female-led superhero movie, which people haven't really seen. There's a Supergirl movie that bombed shortly after Christopher Reeve's Superman. But this is really the first big-budget superhero movie that stars a woman and is directed by a woman, written by a woman. And so people are saying maybe DC is on the come-up. Because this is a real success for them. They did something even Marvel hadn't done by this point, which was have a female-led superhero movie. That was a big success. But that all gets thrown away in Justice League, which comes out the same year. This had a lot of behind-the-scenes issues, um, went through two directors, a bunch of reshoots. Um, There's a divide between fans with a loud... Part of them asking for Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League. This is just a a troubled film. And for something as big as Justice League, which is supposed to be their answer to the Avengers, this was very disappointing for DC. And basically the end of that era of DC movies that started with Man of Steel. Because now they got to go back to the drawing board and figure out what we're going to do, because this is pretty much Zack Snyder's last dealing with DC after he leaves the production of this movie and is replaced by Joss Whedon. So he was the head of DC of their cinematic universe, and now they got to figure out how to move on from him. Also in 2017, from Fox, we get Logan, which is a serious character study um, about Wolverine. It's a it shows that superhero movies can be even... It's basically DC's or Marvel's answer to The Dark Knight. This is this is a very... This isn't a very comic booky movie. This is like an old-fashioned Western. It even gets awards buzz. And this is the end of an era for Marvel as Hugh Jackman retires from Wolverine. And he's the last really actor star from the 2000s era of superhero movies. Tobey Maguire had already moved on from Spider-Man. We don't have Blade anymore. 
Um, so this is kind of the end of that chapter of superhero movies. And then we get into 2018, which was Marvel's best year for movies. They start out with Black Panther, which was a cultural, critical, and commercial success. Um, you know, this is the first black-led superhero movie since pretty much Blade, and it makes over a billion dollars. It enters the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time, gets nominated for Best Picture. Um, and this is Marvel showing that even characters that 10 years ago no one would have known about, like before even Iron Man, most people in the general public didn't know about Iron Man or Captain America or Black Panther or Thor. People knew Spider-Man, the X-Men, the Hulk, and the Fantastic Four. But now, this comes 10 years after Iron Man, and they're showing that through their interconnected universe, they built up these characters that we've built a connection to for a whole bunch of different reasons. And that all culminates in their next movie, which is Avengers Infinity War. So they've been, everything has been leading up to this. Um, they've been hinting at Thanos the whole time. And this movie, Thanos, becomes an iconic movie villain. Um, it enters the top five highest grossing movies of all time. And it's just a huge event. There's people flocking to the theaters. There, I, me I remember my personal experience opening night. That's one of my favorite theater experiences of all time. The hype for this movie was unreal. People were so excited for it. Um, and there's obviously the cliffhanger ending, which leads into Avengers Endgame, which would come out the next year. But at the end of 2018, um, Sony puts out Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is also a major success. Um, people have called it one of the greatest animated movies of all time, the greatest Spider-Man and superhero movies of all time. And... A big reason why this is important to the superhero genre is it introduces the multiverse concept to superhero films. No other movie had really played around with that. And if you've been watching superhero movies currently, you know that's a big part of not just Marvel, but DC. Of All superhero movies are focusing on the multiverse right now, and it kind of starts with this movie. So then 2019, we get to Marvel's peak, which is Avengers Endgame. Um, for a brief time, it's the highest grossing film of all time. Um, this is what every single film since Iron Man has been leading up to. All the characters come back. And it was, for the most part, a satisfying conclusion to the Infinity Gem saga. And a lot of people, this is when it starts to cause a debate between people. Because there's people saying this should be the definite end. There shouldn't really be any movies after this. This is the end of Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. This is the end of Chris Evans' Captain America. So people were saying, okay, I think after 10 years, it's been long enough. This should be the end, but it's not. Because the year prior to this, Marvel purchased 20th Century Fox. So now they own the rights to the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. So people know... Okay, those are coming, but when are they coming? And that's basically been the question ever since Endgame. So that is the end of Marvel's golden era. And ever since then, they've been trying to chase the hype and the success that the Infinity Saga produced. And it hasn't really gotten there. Because after that, the pandemic hits, no movies are coming out. 2020 is the first year in many years when there wasn't a Marvel movie that dropped. So they're starting to move into a new era. This is when Disney Plus comes out, and they're adding TV shows into um, the cinematic universe. So we get WandaVision, we get Loki, we get Hawkeye. And WandaVision and Loki... Our successes, people like them, but it kind of starts to dilute the brand a little bit. There's too much to keep track of for a lot of people. Then in 2021, we get Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is his cut of the Justice League movie. 
this is a big streaming movie during the pandemic. Um, it's Zack Snyder officially moving away from DC. It's received okay, but it's kind of just a example that DC doesn't really know what they're doing. For a lot of people, this is something like what could have been with DC um, if they had taken their time, but this is the last of Zack Snyder's involvement with the DC Universe. And then also in 2021, we get Eternals, which is Marvel's first rotten score on Rotten Tomatoes. And this was an attempt to be an elevated superhero movie, something like Logan or The Dark Knight for Marvel. But it didn't really hit the mark, and it's kind of faded out of um, the public eye. But it's important because this is the first sign of people starting to get tired of Marvel movies. But it appears that they're going to come back because that same year they release Spider-Man No Way Home, um, which is, this is the multiverse in live action for pretty much the first time after Into the Spider-Verse. And this is setting the stage for what's going to come in the future of the MCU. Um, They're very big on the multiverse. This is the multiverse saga. Tobey Maguire comes back, Andrew Garfield comes back, and that's kind of like what the future Marvel looks like it's going to be is bringing back stuff from past movies to get some nostalgia to see characters interact for the first time. And this is a big success. It grosses a billion dollars, highest grossing movie since the start of the pandemic. So it looks like Marvel is going to do okay. But then they can't really keep on holding that. Because after this we get Thor Love and Thunder, which is a massive failure with Marvel fans and critics. We get Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, which is a success, but you look at it and the first movie grossed over a billion dollars. It was nominated for Best Picture. It had all this like hype from all different corners. And then the second movie, obviously, it wasn't... They were going through tough circumstances with the passing of Chadwick Boseman. So you lose your main character and there's the discussion of whether you recast or just move on from the T'Challa character. But this one isn't as big a success as the first one. And that's definitely hurting Marvel. But also in 2022, we get the Batman. So this is DC officially moving on from the Snyder era. This is in a completely different universe and this is going back towards a serious realistic take like from the Christopher Nolan movies so this is kind of DC deciding to say we're gonna experiment more because we get this we get the Suicide Squad from James Gunn which completely disregards the first Suicide Squad movie we get Joker which is also a standalone universe that wins some awards. And so DC is starting to play around a little bit more while also maintaining their universe that they started until they put out The Flash from this past year. This is a massive bomb. It's one of the lowest grossing superhero movies of all time, one of the biggest bombs of all time at the box office. There's a bunch of behind-the-scenes issues um, with Ezra Miller, it's been it was in development hell for like over 10 years at this point they've been trying to make a flash movie and then it comes out and it's a massive failure even this is their attempt at the multiverse so they bring back like michael keaton's batman and even that's not enough so already people are starting to be tired of the multiverse because it's just in every movie at this point and also this past year it was probably marvel's worst year for movies we get Ant-Man, Quantumania, which has a good opening weekend, but it's the first Marvel movie in a long time that barely makes a profit. We don't even know if it made a profit, but it's pretty panned outside of Jonathan Major's performance as Kang in it. We also get, we get Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is, that's, uh, it's a good movie. It's a really good movie, but this is James Gunn's last movie at Marvel. 
and he's going to DC now. So you can't, you're not really going to be able to capture that success again. This is the end of the Guardians, who were probably the, at this point the most popular thing Marvel had going. And now James Gunn is taking his talents to DC, and they're going to completely wipe the slate clean, start over, move on from the universe that was started with Man of Steel. And then finally, this past November, the Marvels came out, and this was Marvel's first bomb. So the Marvels had a budget of $219 million. That's the net budget. And box office was two hundred and six million. So even just looking at that, they didn't turn a profit. But if you do the math of marketing, which is usually two point five times the budget, that's a massive loss in money. And that was the last Marvel film at this point. So basically, we've gone through the whole history. And now we're looking at where our superhero movie is going to go from here. Because not only did the Marvels bomb, but this year we had the whole Jonathan Majors debacle where he was fired from Marvel Studios and he was being set up as their next big villain to replace Thanos. Um, and now he's he's gone. So the question is, do you re- replace him? Do you bring in another villain like Doctor Doom or something like that? And it just seems like superhero movies are not at, they don't have the cultural appeal that they did even five years ago. Um, I'm sure a lot of people were happy about that. But it's still just kind of crazy to see like how far they've fallen. And it's been a couple rough years for both Marvel and DC. There's been a couple highlights, but it's obvious there needs to be a change. DC's making that change with James Gunn, and he's already announced his slate for movies. We have a Superman movie coming out next year. We have another Batman movie coming out that's going to bring Robin back to the screen, as well as um, a Batman movie that's a sequel to Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson's Batman. So DC, they're already at the point of wiping the slate clean. Marvel... It's they're kind of in a tough spot. They're only releasing one movie and it's coming on this upcoming year. And that's Deadpool three, and that's going to deal massively with the multiverse. It's bringing back Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Um, it's apparently going to be Spider Man No Way Home, but for the X Men films. So they're probably going to bring back a lot of people, and that movie is going to be a true test of how strong the Marvel brand is at this point. Because if Deadpool 3 doesn't make at least $900 million, then that's a bad sign for Marvel. Because we already know we're getting Secret Wars in a couple years, or whenever that comes out. And that's basically all the multiverses of Marvel coming together. And there's talks of Tobey Maguire coming back again. There's talks of bringing back, bringing the Spider-Verse films into the MCU. And if this upcoming movie, Deadpool 3, that stars, this bringing back Hugh Jackman has Deadpool, which is a popular character. If that can't do big business in a year that's pretty weak for blockbusters, then that's, that's a big problem for Marvel. And at that point, you have to wonder what's the right move and there's already been talk of bring back chris evans bringing back robert Downey jr but endgame was only almost six years ago and that was the end of those characters story so we're not even six years removed from that at this point and there's already talk of bringing them back to save the marvel brand and honestly it might be too late and marvel's still putting out good stuff loki was a success um, across the Spider Verse. That's Sony Marvel, but still, that was a success. One of the best movies of the year. But the MCU in particular is at a pretty rough patch, and it's going to be interesting to see 
what kind of moves they make going over this next year. So I think that's going to do it for this week. Yeah, I think that's going to do it. Next week will be Oscar predictions. And then the week after that, maybe... And the week after that, maybe rom-coms um, in the spirit of Valentine's Day. But I don't know. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Just me rambling over superhero movies. Um, I, I'm a fan of comic book movies, and I hope they can bounce back. But it's kind of at a point where it looks like something else is going to have to fill that void. But I guess it's just a waiting game for right now. All right, guys, thank you for listening. Um, I'll be back next Friday. I think I'm going to release episodes every Friday, probably in the morning. Um, And I will see you next week. Thank you for listening.